Imagine a giant straw sucking water from a lush green field and spewing it out onto a parched, cracked desert. That's essentially what China's South to North Water Diversion Project is doing, but on a scale so massive, it's hard to wrap your head around. This mega project is about to become the world's largest water diversion system, channeling water from the overflowing rivers of the south to the thirsty cities and farms of the north. But is this a groundbreaking solution to China's water problem, or a colossal mistake with hidden consequences? Join me on a journey down this watery rabbit hole, where we'll explore the ambitious goals, hidden costs, and uncertain future of this mega water project. The story of the South to North Water Diversion Project begins back in 1952, during a time when Chairman Mao Zedong looked at a map of China and saw a stark contrast, a water-rich South and a water-starved North. This disparity sparked a visionary thought. The South has plenty of water and the North lacks it, so if possible, why not borrow some? From that simple idea, a seed was planted. But it took decades for that seed to germinate and grow into the mega project we see today. Studies, surveys, and debates filled the years as engineers grappled with the immense technical challenges of moving water across vast distances and towering mountains. Finally, in 2002, the project received the green light. Construction began on the Eastern Route, a 1,150km canal system that would divert water from the mighty Yangtze River. This was followed by the Middle Route in 2004, drawing water from the Hanjiang River, a tributary of the Yangtze. The ambitious Western Route, aimed at transferring water from the Tibetan Plateau to the Northwest, is still under development. But amidst the excitement, voices of concern began to rise. Environmentalists warned of potential ecological damage, while communities along the routes feared displacement and disruption of their lives. These voices continue to be heard, reminding us that the path to progress is rarely without its challenges. Now, let's dive into the intricate details of the South North Water Transfer Project and its three major routes. The Eastern Route Project, also known as the Jiangdu Hydro Project, is like a lifeline stretching from the Yangtze River to the northern regions. Imagine it as an upgrade to the Grand Canal, with a mission to divert a portion of the Yangtze's flow to northern China. Starting officially in December 2002, this route involves drawing water in Jiangdu through a massive 400 cubic meters per second pumping station. As the project advances, the volume of water diverted northward is set to increase significantly from 8.9 cubic kilometers per year to 14.8 cubic kilometers per year. However, construction faced challenges and water pollution impacted the viability of the route. Originally intended to provide water for provinces like Shandong, Jiangsu, and Hebei, the eastern route faced delays. Despite these hurdles, water began reaching Shandong in 2014, with expectations of transferring 1 cubic kilometer annually by 2018. The completed eastern route spans over 1,152 kilometers, featuring 23 pumping stations with a combined power capacity of 454 megawatts. Notably, a crucial element is the tunnel crossing under the Yellow River, a significant engineering feat positioned 70 meters below the riverbed. Colloquially known as the Grand Aqueduct, the central route flows from the Danjungko Reservoir on the Han River to Beijing. This massive undertaking involved raising the Danjungko Dam's height, allowing water to flow downhill naturally, pulled by gravity through the canals. The route spans 1,264 kilometers, with the central challenge being the construction of two tunnels under the Yellow River to facilitate the canal's flow. Beginning in 2004, the northern stretch of the central route was completed in 2008 at a cost of $2 billion. However, the project faced challenges, including the impact on the Han River's ecosystem and the resettlement of around 330,000 people. Completed in 2014, the Grand Aqueduct initially provided 9.5 cubic kilometers of water annually, with future plans to increase this to 12 to 13 cubic kilometers per year by 2030. To safeguard water quality, industries are prohibited from locating on the reservoir's watershed. 
The Western route, though still in development, holds the ambitious goal of transferring water from the Tibetan plateau to the northwest. This leg involves diverting water from three Yangtze tributaries near the Bayalanka mountain to provinces such as Qinghai, Gansu, Shanxi, Shanxi, Inner Mongolia and Ningxia. While plans include diverting water from upstream sections of rivers like Mekong, Yalong Zhangbo, and Salween, this route's enormity and cost have posed challenges. Additionally, its transboundary nature could impact neighboring countries in South and Southeast Asia. As the colossal South North Water Transfer Project forged ahead, the financial currents proved as tumultuous as the engineering challenges it sought to overcome. In 2008, the projected cost for the eastern and central routes surged to a formidable 254.6 billion yuan, or $37.44 billion. However, the government's commitment, at a mere 53.87 billion yuan, approximately $7.9 billion, barely scratched the surface of this financial behemoth. Breaking down the financial puzzle, the central government and special accounts contributed 26 billion yuan, local governments chipped in 8 billion, and loans added almost 20 billion yuan. Yet, this budgetary allocation only hinted at the financial hurdles that lay ahead. By 2008, a modest 30 billion yuan had coursed through the veins of the eastern and central routes. The eastern route sipped 5.66 billion yuan, while the central route gulped a more substantial 24.82 billion yuan. However, this was a mere preview of the financial odyssey that lay ahead. The financial narrative of the project was far from static. It mirrored the dynamic complexities of the construction. The initial figures quickly became outdated as the projects unfolded, demanding a constant reassessment of financial commitments. The cost of escalation underscored the intricate dance between budget constraints and the insatiable appetite of a project of this magnitude. Navigating the financial tributaries of this mega-project required finesse. Balancing government allocations, local contributions and loans was no easy feat. The financial story of the South North Water Transfer Project is not just about numbers, it's a testament to the delicate balance needed when managing resources, both financial and natural, on an unprecedented scale. While the South to North Water Diversion Project boasts impressive engineering and ambitious goals, it has also attracted significant criticism and raised crucial questions about its environmental impact and social cost. The project's construction has displaced at least 330,000 people in central China, disrupting their lives and livelihoods. Critics argued that relocations were not always voluntary, with reports of villagers forced into signing agreements and inadequate compensation. This raises ethical concerns about the project's impact on communities and the potential for social injustice. The project's massive scale raises concerns about its potential to pollute water sources and harm ecosystems. In 2013, fish farmers on the Dongping Lake reported significant fish deaths, attributing them to polluted water diverted from the Yangtze River. This incident highlights the potential for water contamination and its detrimental effects on aquatic life. Scientists have expressed concern over the project's potential to increase water evaporation losses. While the exact amount is still unknown, it could significantly reduce the amount of water reaching its intended destination. This highlights the need for further research and careful management to optimize water use and minimize losses. These concerns highlight the complex trade-offs inherent in large-scale infrastructure projects. While the project promises significant benefits in alleviating water scarcity and boosting economic growth, its potential environmental consequences and social costs must be carefully considered. Finding a balance between progress and sustainability is key. This requires robust environmental impact assessments, transparent decision-making processes, and adequate compensation and support for displaced communities. Only then can the project achieve its goals without compromising the well-being of people and the environment. And there you have it, a journey through China's South North Water Transfer Project, a marvel of engineering and a testament to the intricacies of balancing nature and progress. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell for more deep dives into the world's fascinating stories.
This is Echinoscope, where authenticity meets analysis. We delve into the heart of topics, providing you with unfiltered insights and a genuine understanding of the world around us. Your thoughts matter, so drop a comment below and let me know what you'd like to unravel next. Until then, stay curious, stay informed, and I'll catch you in the next episode.